I want to get right into the Word this morning. Go with me to 2 Samuel chapter 11. Uh, we have been talking much about, in fact, our series has been Truth or Dare. Um, and today we're going to talk about the truth of, of sexual purity. We're talking about purity today. And as you know, we've, we've talked about abuse. We've talked about marriage and divorce. Uh, Pastor Joe preached about freedom. Last week I talked about the truth of the church, and today uh, we're going to be talking uh, about the, the truth of purity. We're going to specifically be talking about sexual purity. God gave me a word um, before we even came to discovery, uh, before we knew there was a discovery, um, that, that we'd received the call about possibly interviewing for this position, and the previous pastor had had a moral failure, and um, there were some sexual sins, and I said, I don't want to mess with that. And God said, you're to be the next pastor. And um, so we came, and God spoke to my heart and said, there will be a great revival among our men. Did you know that 14% of the time when a woman, uh, a mom, a wife gives their hearts to the Lord, 14% of the time the whole family gets their hearts to the Lord. But did you know when there is a man who gives their hearts to the Lord, 94% of the time the whole family comes yeah. to Christ. Now, help me understand, I, I, I want you to understand this. This is not because the men are greater than women. It's just that the way that God ordained his house, uh, the home, to be. The man is to be the head of the household, okay? And, and so when a man, uh, and let me tell you, men, your children are watching. And so often, it is sad, but so often the, 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 the mom, the woman have, has to wear the spiritual pants in the family. We're not going to be that way at Discovery Church. Okay, what excites me is when I see men rush into these altars. That's what excites me. It really just, um, that's what it's about. And, and then the, the, the wife comes alongside of them. To the, so, um, and then you see the kids. And so I'm glad that you all have stayed with us. And uh, aren't you glad for, for a spirit-filled church? Aren't you glad for what God is doing in our church? And if you want to go to a dead, boring church, there's plenty of them, okay? But I promise you, that is not our endeavor. We want to be a spirit filled, filled with life, filled with grace, filled with mercy, filled with love. And, and so 2 Samuel chapter 11 and uh, verse number 1. In the spring, at the time when the kings were supposed to go to war, David sent Joab out to the king's men. Thank you. And the whole Israelite army, they destroyed the Ammonites, besieged Rabbah, but David remained in Jerusalem. It's very important to remember, especially in this culture of that time, when the men would go to war, all the men would go to war. If you were of age, you went. And, and, and they say that about 13 years of age and older, even if you weren't a fighting soldier, you would be with uh, their parents or their, their dad, or they would be uh, uh, they would go and fetch water, take care of the livestock. They would, in some cases, if they were strong enough, they would be uh, a junior armor bearer kind of thing. And, and so there would be no men. The, so the, imp, the, the, the city would be empty of men. And, and, and so they were very exposed when that would happen. So um, <clears throat> the women could do what they wanted without fear of being seen by a man, and there were no bathtubs that day, and they had open cisterns or, or pools, if you will, in cities, and, and they would go and they would, they, would, they would cleanse themselves, they'd take a bath. And so one evening, David got up from his bed and walked around the roof of his palace. So, so in other words, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he possibly most likely would see, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, the woman was very beautiful. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, this is Bathsheba, the daughter of Edom, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to her, and she came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanliness. Then she went back home. The woman, can, the woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant. Let's pray. Lord, I ask for your help this morning as I share this word. God, I pray that you would help me best uh, speak what you placed in my heart, my heart to speak. And I ask God that you um, would just uh, do uh, a deep work in our hearts. And um, we thank you for what you've already done. 
And we give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to share with you just a few statistics and we'll get right into the word. Uh, according to the latest George Barna uh, research, um, he does a lot of research in churches, 68 million times a day in America will there be a, a searching for uh, something on Google, something on Yahoo, something on whatever search engine site you would use. And every one out of every four of those searches, they're searching for pornography. Around 60, it's interesting, the, the, the same number, 68% of people who go to church would tell those researchers that they look at pornography at least once a week. Now, if 68% of them are being honest, how many percentage of people aren't being honest? Think about it. 50% um, of pastors admitted to, list, uh, to, to watching, to seeing, to viewing some type of porn on a weekly basis. Of the age group of 18 to 24, that number goes from 68% to 76%. So, porn addiction is real. And, and since 2007, since the invention of the Apple iPhone, it has grown exponentially. They said they can't even put a number on it. In our culture, we're taught it's not that big of a deal anymore. But I want you to know it's a huge deal. It is responsible for 82%, according to an attorney and did this research of, of the marriages that, that he was involved in with divorce and his firm, and he contacted other firms, 82% of divorces that, uh, that obviously end a marriage, uh, marriages that end a divorce, 82%, one of the partners were actively on a daily basis looking for sites such as that. So do you think the pornography has entered the home? Oh, yeah. And so is the answer more education? Is the answer more communication about this? Well, the, the, the answer is the church quit being silent about it and speak the truth because pornography is an addiction that needs to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ. So you know what happens with, when you begin to see these images? Uh, dopamine's released. And it, it literally rewires your brain. And they say when children are introduced to it at a younger age, it literally changes the perspective or skews their, 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 their perspective on how they look at the opposite sex. I am so thankful that I was born at such a time that I was born, and, and I'm so thankful mom and dad are here today, and I'm so thankful to have parents who, who were very... Uh, uh, controlling we had three channels sometimes well actually we had two and sometimes if you turned the chan the antenna just the right way you would get ABC out of Tulsa and um, and and I'm glad I wasn't exposed to that and, and until years later so many years later and um, you see the problem is the brain remembers uh, the patterns and it forms these these different synopsis in your in a firing mechanism and what happens is uh, it becomes accustomed to receiving this dopamine and and what happens is after a period of time of watching and seeing this you you become disengaged with reality and so basically you are escaping to another place and so you become someone that is just numb to what is really going on around you. And so the question is, is how should the church respond in such a day? Do we just give up and think, well, everybody's going to do it, so let's just fall suit. And let's just let's, let's not even talk about it. Let's just No, I believe the truth is the church needs to tell the truth about pornography. 
And I believe we need to address it. I believe that we as men, because men are, the percentages of men versus women are tremendous. So women are 22% likely in the church to look at porn on once a week basis. That number is growing tremendously. What I'm saying is we've got to speak the truth in love, not condemning. If you're here today and you're hearing my voice and you're thinking, pastor's just wanting to beat me up and cause me to feel guilt and shame. No, I want you to feel conviction so the conviction, convicting power of the Holy Spirit brings about a, an incredible change in your life. Because I don't want you to walk around with this weight for the entire part of the rest of your life thinking, I'm just always going to be this way. No, God can set people free. Can you say amen? And so we believe that to be true, and I want us to understand, I really believe that if it's whatever, if, if it's a substance abuse, if it's pornography, whatever it is, the Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary for our forgiveness and for our sins. And so we want to receive that and be a new person. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. And so I want you to have hope. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. I want you to have hope knowing that that hope will cause you to build your faith because hope is the foundation of our faith. And so you begin to have hope and you begin to hear the word, the word of God. It, it, it gives you an understanding. Without hope and without faith, we cannot please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder. He rewards us according to our faith. So I'm going to give you three things this morning. I'm going to cut way back. I want to give you three things. I'm going to look at my notes, and I want you to look at this. I want you to write these things down. First of all, if you want to overcome, everybody say overcome. overcome. If you really want to be set free, you want to stay set free, three things I'm going to give you really quick. This first. first of all is you've got to set your face. You've got to be determined through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about through your own willpower because your own willpower won't last a couple of weeks at best. You're going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to start working out. I'm going to quit eating Twinkies and drinking Pepsi. Come on, somebody. I'm, going to, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. You know what? The first time you drive by Dunkin' Donuts, you're like, oh, I feel God in this, you know? And, and, and you know that's what happens. And so that's our, that's our nature. We have to fight against our nature. Whatever you feed the most, if you feed the flesh the most, that's what's going to win. If you feed the spirit the most, that's what's going to win. And the scripture says we need to set our mind on things above, not on things below. So whatever you think about, and you don't, you have authority to tell your brain what to think about. And when those thoughts that are impure thoughts come in your mind, because you're watching something you shouldn't be watching, first of all, I want you to understand, get off those sites. There's, there's a, there's a, there's a private, there's a called private eyes. Anything that, that would cause you to, to go toward that direction, you need to say, I'm going to set my mind on the things of God. Because I'm going to set, the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter, chapter 8, verse 5, that when the Spirit comes into our life, that we begin to want to please God. But that want to please God begins to fade, begins to lose, begin to, be, begins to... In, uh, desensitize us when we begin to look at the things of the flesh okay and so we've got to the bible says of jesus in luke chapter 9 that he set his face toward jerusalem what did that mean it meant his focus was going going to the cross to die for our sins and so they were going to go to samaria and they went to samaria and the disciples said these people aren't listening to us they're not you know they're not doing what we've asked them to do they're not even listening to you do you want to kill them all really just call fire down from heaven. And Jesus is like, are you, let me paraphrase, are you idiots? The Son of Man did not come to, say, to destroy lives, but to seek and to save the lives. And so he set his face. You have to set your face that I'm not going to look at that. You know what, wife? I've got my phone here, and you can have access in it when I come home. You know all my passwords. You know my email. My wife will go on my phone. She'll go on my email. She'll go on anything she wants to because there's nothing to hide. And every once in a while, just messing with her, I say, uh, <laughs> she knows what I'm fixing to say. Every once in a while, I'll say, if Stephanie calls or texts while you're looking at that, please just tell her I'll call her later. I, I've done that since we've been married. I probably need to quit that, but I'm just messing with her. And she knows, and one of the boys, they've heard this conversation too, and every once in a while they'll say, oh, yeah, that's Stephanie. Oh, yeah, I remember now. There is no Stephanie. 
And, and, but, but I want you to know, they need, if you're hiding something from your spouse, if you're hiding something from your parents, that is wrong and that in itself is a sin because it's going to lead you down the wrong path. And so we're going to set our mind. If we're going to overcome, we're going to set our mind. Number two, we're going to run. Everybody say run. We're going to run from temptation. Now, you're, you're scrolling through the television, and, and, you, and you, you, you're trying to find law and order. Dun, 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 whatever that say. You know, my wife is law and order. She loves law. We've not watched it in a long, long time, but we, I, I, I just like the theme song. It's just all this is a bass. It's really cool. And so... Um, you're watching Law and Order. Law and Order's not coming on for another 30 minutes. You're scrolling through the, the channels, and all of a sudden you see something. You're like, ooh. And it catches your eye. And you know you shouldn't be hanging there, but you keep looking at it. And you start justifying looking at it. Oh, I want you to look. This, how much awful sin I'm looking at. This is terrible. This is I'm going to text the pastor, right? I'm going to email him right now on channel so-and-so. I'm going, oh, that's horrible. That's awful. Sin. That's just sin. She needs to put some clothes on. God help her to put them. Listen, turn the channel. Or turn off the boob tube. Or, or turn off the television. Right? Run from temptation. In Genesis chapter 39, there's a story of Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife wanted to make a pass at Joseph. No, telling how many times she made a pass at David. But one day, finally, she got so bold enough that she, she was close enough in proximity that she grabbed, she wanted to sleep with Joseph. She grabs his what? His coat, and he runs. You see, the more you contemplate that moment, the more likely you are to do something stupid in that moment. David was at the wrong place. He should have been leading his team into battle. He was at the wrong place at the wrong time, did the wrong thing with the wrong person. It was not his wife. Did you know I really believe, I'm convinced, one of the biggest reasons why men fall into sexual perversion and sin is because of boredom. Run from your temptation, number three. Go on an adventure with God. You are made to be adventurous. Remember when you were a little kid and you're going to build a tree house. Remember you were a little kid and you're playing cards. Remember a little kid and you're imagining. You know what you are? You're a big kid. You were made for more. You were made for bigger than you. Go on an adventure with God. Grow in your walk with Him. Talk to Him on a daily, on a daily basis. Hear His voice. Be adventurous. Your life is too short just to float through life and look at a sight and think that's fulfilling. Listen, that ain't fulfilling. That's bondage. That's change. That's, 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 that's confining. But God wants to take you on an incredible adventure with him. And, and, and God wants you to understand he's got a life that you can't even fathom or imagine. He's got a marriage. He's got kids. He's got everything that you could ever uh, dream about, but you've got to decide, I'm going to let go of what is fake or what is, is, is false reality, and I'm going to live in the now, and I'm going to go on an adventure in Christ. So last night, our oldest son He got married. As you know, I've heard, I've been to, my, I've been to more showers in the last three months, and I, 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 I hope nobody has to attend this many showers. Uh, marriage, 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 wedding, 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 planning, 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 planning. Are we going to have, what kind of, uh, of, of, of flowers are we going to have? What, 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 kind of, what are we going to serve? What songs? How are we going to decorate? And I'm sick of it. And, 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 and did you know that wedding lasted about 22 minutes? <laughs> you know how many hours were spent preparing? I told my son last night, I went back and had prayer with him. And I said, listen, this will last just that long. 
But my prayer is your marriage lasts forever. You see, this time last year, Kel, our oldest, he's leaving on his honeymoon in about an hour. But this time last year, he was not doing good. He was living in sin. He was with a young lady that he was more lusting over than he was loving toward. He was in bondage. You know what? I had grandma and grandpa, both sets, praying. I fasted, I prayed, we fasted, we prayed. We did some... Most parents wouldn't have done what we'd done. I'm not patting myself on the back, but God spoke to my heart and said, I'll take care of it. And you know, last July, he had to have heart surgery. And we didn't know. We thought he was still together. And we were on Tinkiller Lake, and God spoke to me. And she said, you need to go tell your son. And I said, God, well, I'm going to tell him that. He's still saying he's, he's going to marry this girl. And I said, Kel, God spoke to me. I'm going to be honest. We did kind of, God told me next year at this time you're going to be married. And the girl that you're with now is not going to be your wife. And you know, God took that away from him. It hurt him in the moment. But now he's married to a girl who loves Jesus. Pentecostal saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Her mom and dad lives for Jesus. I'm telling you, prayer turns everything around. His whole countenance, his whole life has changed. I don't know what bondage your son or daughter's in, but I know this. God can set them free. I got a call early Monday morning of a young man who, unless the Lord intervened, was going to die. Was gonna, he was crashing. And it's all sexual perversion. And I want you to know, I prayed over him. I believe God for him. And it is awful. You see, the sin looks so appealing at first. The pornography looks really so appealing at first. But can I tell you, it is so much bondage. I'm praying for victory in that young man's life. I'm praying for, and if I said his name, most of you would know. But I want you to know that no matter how far you've gone, God is with you in that moment. No matter how far your kids have gone, And the last point is this. I want you to fight for purity. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. That is such an unattainable goal for a lot of people. And you think, well, it's it's never going to happen for me. No, I want you to fight. But see, understand this. You're not fighting alone. Paul said, why do I do the things I don't want to do and don't do the things I wish I would do? Why? Because we have a sinful nature. Every one of us have a sinful nature. Let me, let me, let me conduct a real quick survey. And I want us, we're in a church, we're not being judgmental, we're, we're going to be honest, and we're going to be real. Because we, need, we must be real. How many of you have ever, ever, ever lusted after somebody? Raise your hand. I'm waiting because I'm still seeing some men, the hand not raised. And if you're thinking my wife's going to hit me, going to jar me, and no, let's just be real. Keep your hands up. I want you to look around. Every one of us have sin. And you see, the enemy says this, because you have a lust problem, then you have a sin problem. Temptation in itself is not sin. When Jesus said, if you look on a woman and you lust after her, you know what lust is? If you look at somebody and you think they're pretty, that's not sin. But when you continually think about that young lady and what you would do or that young man, 
to be with that person, then you are contemplating a scenario like David did to say, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to inquire of her. I'm going to send for her. See, it's, it builds. There, there's a crescendo. Does that make sense? So I want you not to live in condemnation just because you think someone's pretty. Women, I know that, 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 and you struggle with that as well. I think that guy's good looking. My wife told me the other day, we were talking, she was really honest. Uh, Paul Ryan, that was a senator a few years, a house speaker, uh, we were in Washington, D.C., and, and she, she said, I think he's cute. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and the other day, we were talking, and she said, I, I, I've had three crushes in my life. Your dad's one of them. This is all my, my sons. I'm like, I'm glad I'm included, I guess. She said, Paul Ryan, Oscar De La Hoya, and your, and your daddy. So if you ever read Martha and De La Hoya get married, then, then we have pro- no, not going to happen. What I want you to understand is this. Keep fighting. It's worth the fight. And you're not fighting alone. And if you quit fighting, you'll give in. And men, listen to me. I want to see revival of men in our church. I mean, I want to see a Holy Ghost outpoured revival in our church. But I need you to be a man of God. Doesn't mean you're perfect. Scripture says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he keeps getting back up. Come on, get up. Get up. Get up. And stay up. I don't care if I have to come behind you and prop you up. I don't care if there are many men going to help prop you up. We're in this together. Let's, let's, let's understand this is a family. I, I, I want to take as many people to heaven with me as, my, as I can. So we're going to fight for purity. Young people, oh, it, Proverbs chapter 3, if I have time, but I don't have time. Proverbs chapter 3, no, it's chapter, chapter 7, verse 3. Solomon said there's this young man, and he's looking for the wayward woman. And... Um, He's just not smart, and he's really naive. I'm trying to warn him, but he's not listening. And then his point is really this. You think it's all good until it's not. Because you start looking, start looking. You're curious. But I can tell you, God's way is always best. He said the marriage bed is undefiled. And I'm not bragging, but, but for the grace of God, the only young lady I've ever been with is my wife. Thank God. But I'm not trying to condemn either. Hear my heart. I believe with all my heart, the day you accept Christ, the day that you come back to Christ, God says, you're a virgin. God says, all that's over. It's done. So if you're, you're carrying around baggage this morning, you think, you know what, Pastor, I've already blown it. God's blood has already covered it. God's blood has already covered it. Let's fight for purity. I hope you understand my heart behind this series is simply to speak truth in love. You see, sin is never satisfied. It keeps growing. But Paul said you can come to a place in Christ that you're content. Doesn't, want, doesn't mean that you don't want more. You want more of God. But you know what? David said, as a deer pants after the water, so my soul longs after you. I'm convinced one of the biggest deterrent to sexual sin is just going after God. Just saying, God, I want you. And you know what? 
When you seek Him first, all things. When you seek first the kingdom of God, all these other things will be added unto you. I was scared to death growing up because I was raised in a small town. Spiral First Assembly of God. Thirteen people in my youth group. I went to school with about all, I knew them since I was a kid. And I was scared to death. God was going to make me marry somebody ugly and fat. Come on, how many of you raised Pentecostal and you, you, you had that thought, God's going to make me? Okay, maybe you weren't raised like I was. Because my dad and mom's, uh, their, their convictions were she had to be in church, she had, she had to go to church regularly, and she had to be spirit-filled. Well, that numbers, that, that, that lowers the numbers considerably. But I found a girl, and God blessed. Let me tell you, God's way is always best. Always best. I want everybody to stand with me, would you? Heads bowed, eyes eyes closed, please. We're going to have opportunity for response. If you need Jesus to forgive you of sin, you need Jesus to forgive you. You need the Lord to save you. Dedicate your life to the Lord or rededicate your life to the Lord. You need Jesus. On the count of three, don't be ashamed. You need Jesus to, to touch your heart. You came here with a lot of baggage, but you want to leave here free. On the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. I need Jesus to forgive me. I need Jesus to forgive me. Hands are going up. Hands are going up. I see every hand over here. Yeah, even in the risers, I see those hands. Everybody in the house, say this with me because nobody prays alone. Everybody say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart. Please save me and change me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand of praise. Now, every person that raised their hand in just a minute, I'm going to give an opportunity for response. I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you to come with others, okay? Now, now how many of you, because I, I believe there's going to be a lot, and we're going to be real, we're going to be honest, but how many of you are going to start fighting harder for purity? Raise your hand. Come on, you're going to fight harder for purity. Keep your hands up. I'm looking around. I'm going to fight harder for purity. That means I'm not going to watch just anything on top. I'm going to fight for purity. I'm going to fight for purity. Now, now, now. I'm going to ask this because I really believe I need to. And I want you to be honest because we're, we're in a safe house. They say, Pastor, if I raise my hand, my mother-in-law is going to get on the Facebook this afternoon and look out. No, she isn't. If she is, she ain't saved, okay? But let's just be real. No one has to know your past, but God does. And I want you to have victory over your past. Those of you that raise your hand for salvation, you're going to come because we're going to pray. But how many of you, let's be real, you struggle with your past because you, you lived in bondage. And it's just like a weight that just sets on you. And you, you want that weight to be lifted off of you today. And, and maybe, whether your past was yesterday or 20 years ago, you want that weight of feeling so condemned because you messed up. You want that weight gone. On the count of three, raise your hand. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You want that weight gone. Even students, you have some weight from your past, from sin, from hurt, from looking at things you shouldn't look at, watching things you shouldn't watch. But you want that gone today in Jesus' name. I want you to be bold. I want you to be not ashamed. But I want you to be free. On the count of three, raise your hand. One, two, three. You want free. You want free. You want free. Every person your hands raised up, come to the front right now. Come on. Come right now. I know it takes it takes courage. Those that raise your hand for salvation, come right now to the front. Come on. Come right now. Come right, right now. You raise your hand over here. Come on. Right right now. Over here in the risers. You want freedom. There's some others. You need to come. We're going to close in just a minute. Joe's going to close us in a closing prayer. Pastor Joe's going to close us. But if you want freedom... Now's the time. Many of you received freedom earlier, but you want freedom from your past. Now, therefore, those that are in Christ Jesus, there is therefore now no condemnation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If you want freedom, these altars are open. I need, I need some people to come right now. Come and get behind some of these men, women. Come right now. 
Come on, come on. If you need prayer for any reason, these altars are open. Healing, physical, emotional, whatever it is, you need, you need God. We're going to close in just a moment, so please stay with us. We're going to close. We're going to pray with these that have responded, okay? Put your hands this way, and let's pray. If you're a warrior, if you're a prayer team, come help us pray. Let's pray together. Yeah.